I think uh, probably around the country people have adopted all kinds of different ways to oppose academies and we're winning the argument all around the country too. It's a very important process, not just around the question of academy schools, but around the whole question of democracy. People who, who, who live in our communities are able to come together, formulate a campaign and then pursue it through and not feel, as a lot of people are encouraged to do, that there is no point in things, that the powers that be will always have their way. That's why we took direct action. That's why we camped on the thing. That's why I de-locked myself there, to protest against this process of the total destruction of democracy. I went to uh, the local Democracy Day last Monday, and Gareth Daniel was addressing the masses. I asked him if there'd ever been any consultation in Brent where the decision had actually been made in advance of the consultation. And he said, no, that doesn't happen in Brent. The Liberal Democrats originally fought the elections in the local elections of 2006 on the promise that they would oppose a school on the Wembley Park playing fields. We've referred to the fact that Lib Dems uh, were opposed to academies in the election. That's one of the reasons they got elected, but they turned tail. People can do anything once you're united, and once you're determined, <coughs> once you've got a strategy, once you've got people prepared to work. We can change the world. Interestingly, of course, it varies around the country. I've got a thing from here with a planning committee in Hull said of a, a, a proposal for an academy there that they objected to it because, because building on the playing fields would destroy valuable green space. So there's still some people who can see a bit of logic. This is Hull. But what's going on over there? In Sheffield, there's a vote going on at present um, on whether to have an academy or not. The only material allowed to be sent out is that in favour of an academy. And the response of the authority was that if they sent arguments against the academy out with the papers, it might confuse voters. <laughs> um, and they also said that they, um, they had the right to ignore the vote anyway and to go ahead with an academy. The thing that shocked me and horrified me as a parent was getting through this huge, lovely A4 glossy brochure with pictures of children that presented you know, really gave the impression that this was a school that already existed, that these were photographs of, of children who were already in this school. There was no mention that they were going to be important cabins. The best thing, I thought, was the, um, the modules. Did you, you know the modules are actually what they call huts? That's a temporary <laughs> building. And here it is. But it's got a great big heap of earth in front of it. Bare wood all around the sides, single storey not even prefabricated huts that the children have been educated in. The thing that disgusted me was that came in an envelope from the Open Education Department with a covering letter headed from the Sprint Education Department. I didn't get a glossy brochure delivered to my house from any of the schools. I'm not bearing in mind I live about 100 yards away from a local school. <coughs> any of the other schools in the borough, which I know to be good schools, the school where my other children have gone to school, or any you know, schools my friends' children have gone to, none of them were able to produce a glossy brochure because guess what? They spend their money educating. In the children. Jacqueline Steele, the head teacher, said the fact that it was on a building site didn't matter because when the bulldozers went by and, and the cranes went by, the children gave them a cheerful wave. So the children were happy to have workmen on the, in the area. I've just got one question, really. Um, do you think it's safe to put children on a construction site for two years? They won't be on a construction site. They'll be a solid quality temporary accommodation. So you're not concerned about that at all? There have been governing bodies who have decided, after listening to the arguments and seeing campaigns, who said that they don't want to be involved in academies in different parts of the country, but there are academy sponsors, so it's just not worth the bad publicity that it's generating for them. There is very good reason for you having bad publicity associated with your sponsorship of the Academy Programme, because the Academy Programme is about the fragmentation and the destruction of the state education system. It is not a programme of educational advance, it's not a programme to do with educational standards. I remember, of course, the first proposed sponsor, in quotes, which is interesting, isn't it? Because they then gave two million. They don't give anything now, by the way. They just have to say that they'll give you some advice. Okay, so that's gone out. The, that's gone out of the window. But that was Andrew Rosenfeld. What happened is he sold his shares in Minerva for a hundred million, and he went to live as a tax exile in Switzerland. And he said he wanted to put something back. Actually, what he wanted to do is take everything out. And he was a great man of principle because he applied to be the Tory party national treasurer and then he gave a million pounds to get Blair elected in the last election. 
and it was of course complete coincidence, unrelated, that he was put forward for a peerage. The government have been consistently unable to show that an academy's programme has in any way um, improved results. In fact, out of their, um, the schools that they uh, attacked recently as being failing schools, 28 of them were academy schools. The type of people we are getting to run our schools, here's a good one, it was a front page in the News of the World, Booker's Bondage and Drugs Orgy, and it's um, Lord Laidlaw there, okay, and it says uh, he was having um, sex games with four girls, one gigolo, and a trilingual bisexual. Councils are a survey. Who should be involved in running our schools? The local education authority, nearly 90%. Parents, 73%, as they are currently on governing bodies. Charities, only 38. Faith groups, 37. Private sponsors, 36. Arpad Busom says, we've been investing with at least seven hedge funds and have made a return of 50% plus over the past year in the subprime market. That's his business. That's his business. Big hedge fund person making loads of money out of exploiting everyone else. It's going to be a good environment for stock, stock pickers, macro strategies, and, le and later in the year, distressed debt. This is an article at Christmas in the Times. He's looking forward to the market in distressed debt. <laughs> so if you've got any problems with debt, it's really cheering him up because he's going to be able to make a load of money out of it. He also said, this is a fascinating one, people have taken severe knocks in the past year, redundancies are rising, credit is tough, inflation is back in our vital goods, and most of our backers, that's arts backers, are hedge fund managers who have been struggling, like everyone, to keep their heads up up in the current financial turmoil. It is true that hedge funds now, like the bankers, and they were bigger, bigger money people than the bankers, are now facing going bust. They reckon, they estimate that half of them will go bust. So what are we doing? Putting this sort of person in, who's part of the people who've destroyed our economy, and he says it himself, they're investing in the whole thing, subprimes, which caused the thing, and likely to go bust anyhow, yet Brent Council, having already made one stupid decision, with Andrew Rosenfeld, the person they said was a brilliant choice, okay, who was a complete con artist, <laughs> fortunately had the grace to go off and uh, uh, live in Switzerland. I mean, he didn't want to pay any tax anyhow, but we're going to get some other people doing it. But there's a bit of good news. Lord Adonis has been shunted into the sidings in, uh, as rail minister. That, that's, a, that's a very positive thing. He was the unelected Lord with a great impact um, on education policy under Blair, and also under Brown. When he was advisor in number 10, before he became the schools minister, he took these journalists to Milwaukee to see their voucher system. Their voucher system works on the basis that parents get their share of the education budget and they can hand it over to get into their local state school. But if you want to go to the school down the road, which has marketised itself, which is publishing its SATs, as they call it, the SATs results, which is higher up the league table, you have to pay a top-up fee to get the child in. And that top-up fee can be twice as much as the fee that they give you if you want to go to the next available school at the next tier, and so on. So the children are segregated, not just, uh, not just um, uh, actually, but deliberately on the basis of their class and on their relation to uh, the wealth and poverty gap. The school that you could buy into with your, with your voucher was one in which there are metal detectors on the door where they employ ex-policemen on the, on the corridors with dogs, where they have regular raids for drugs and, and those kinds of problems. So it's basically a warehousing for the poorest children. 